to a bit more detail here. Who's a feminist? Show of hands. I guess. By Andrew's definition that he provided earlier. Now suddenly nobody's a feminist. They're not a feminist anymore. Okay, so the Google said the definition, the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. So an entailment of equality between, of the sexes is going to be rejection of patriarchy, otherwise you can't be equal, right? You would agree that that's true? So then my definition was absolutely correct, right? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Let's see. So going around the table, I'll just ask my stack. Who is the primary victim of war, men or women? War? Yeah, who's the primary victim of war, men or women? Men. Men. Men? I think both. Both? Men. 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 Equally? Men. E equally? Men. Did the German <laughs> girl say equally? Okay. So, why and why, for those of you who said equally? I think everyone suffers from war, right? Like there's, yeah, there are more f fatalities within men, but suffrage is different, right? Everyone suffers, so equally they both suffer. Are there different degrees of suffering? Mm -hmm. Like somebody who stubs their toe, for example, uh, suffers less than somebody who uh, loses a family member. Would you agree with that statement? Sorry, could you repeat that one more time? You're saying that. What? Repeat that one more time. You said. Okay, somebody who stubs their toe, mm -hmm. they bang their toe on uh, a corner mm -hmm. versus somebody who loses a family member. Which is worse. Is the well, suffering obviously, worse? Obviously, the person who lost a family member is worse. I mean, you said everybody suffers, therefore it's equal. Granting that women will suffer in war, is the suffering equal to the suffering of men? Knowing what you know well, about war. Well, obviously they're different, right? But the way that women have to suffer, they lose a son, they lose a brother, they lose a dad. That suffering, you can't say that that suffering is less than men suffering because they're dying in war or... The question is, who's the primary victim? So when it comes to, I guess, victimhood status, are you more a victim if you're murdered as compared to being the family of the murdered? Mm. Would you rather be murdered or would you rather someone you know got murdered and deal with the suffering that would come along with that? I'd rather both of us not get murdered. Can you engage with a hypothetical? No, I don't want to. Why not? Because I don't want to. Either way, my answer you don't is have I the, you both don't have the are mental both are victims. Okay, question. Your, uh, your cousin is murdered. Would you prefer that over you being murdered? Would I rather have my cousin murdered or me be murdered? Yes, in terms of... Perhaps the framing could be like, what is a what would have a bigger impact on you? Of course, my cousin being murdered would have a bigger impact because me being murdered, how the fuck would I remember that, right? All right, I'm moving it over. Um, oh, here, but, hang on, hang on. But let me just engage very quickly. In life, are you going to suffer? Everyone suffers, yes. Is it preferable to live, even though you suffer? Sorry, what? I was reading. Is that. it preferable to live even though you suffer? Yes. Okay, well then if it's preferable to live even though you suffer, then if men are dying and you're not, then isn't it preferable for you to be in the state where you're not dying and so can live to suffer? No, I'd rather kill myself because I don't want to see my men, my brothers, my dad, <coughs> all the men around me to die and then me suffer watching that. Okay. So you said it's equal. Why do you think that? Because I think if there's war in your country, it's just like, mm -hmm. like it's terrible, even if you're not drafted. And I think if your partner or family member or friend dies in war, I think it's as 
I'd say it's also terrible for. Well, let me ask you about a recent conflict. They have to live then. With that. You're from Germany. You live in Europe. You're not too far away from Ukraine. In Ukraine, all the women could leave the country. Yeah. Men between the ages of 18 and either 60 or 65. Men had to stay in the country. They could not leave the country. Men are overwhelmingly the casualties of war in the Ukraine conflict, the civilian and the military casualties. Knowing that all women, if they were inclined to, could flee the country and all men had to stay, in this specific conflict, would you say that the suffering experienced comparatively between Ukrainian women and Ukrainian men is comparable, is equal? Mm. I think it's really hard to tell, but I've not seen any of those men, but I've seen kids on the street who were allowed to come to our countries suffer and cry for their parents or yeah, dad because they don't have them anymore. And I think that's pretty much equal. Well, I would imagine the child, the distribution of children is 50-50 about between boys and girls. So the suffering between boys and girls would be equalized. I mean, little boys are not forced to stay in Ukraine. No, but well, they, that's, I'm saying they can flee, but you, the, the question is between men and women. But the children, the distribution there is probably fairly equal, 50-50. So you have both boys and girls who are suffering. Yeah. Okay. You think they're suffering equally? The kids, yeah. Right. Okay, and let me ask you this. When it comes to suffering, are people capable of moving on from the death of a loved one? I don't know. I think You've never had a loved one die? No. Never? N never. Okay. But do you concede that there are people who have loved ones die every day, and they are able over time to move on from those traumas, right? I'm sure there are. But I'm yeah. Sure Can you move on from death? No. But no. So then how are these even close to equally yoked? If you can move on from the suffering of a loved one dying, but you can't move on from death. How can you ever compare and say that the victims then primarily would be both? It, could, it would only be one, right? You could at least recover from the suffering of the loss of a loved one, but can you recover from death? No, you can't, but no. you don't have to suffer through the life after. Uh, wait, so suffering, is, it's, it's, death is preferable to suffering? I mean... No, I guess not. Isn't in your life, haven't you suffered? Not as bad as... I'm not saying as bad, else. but you have suffered, right? Yeah. yeah, and I noticed that you're still quite alive. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> probably likely prefer to be alive, correct? Yeah, because my worst suffering was when I hurt myself, when I like got injured or something, like nothing terrible. Yeah, I, so, I, but the thing is, is that even though you suffer, you still prefer life. So let me ask you this. If you could ask all of the dead soldiers on the battlefield that one question, would you prefer that I brought you back to life even though you would suffer, or would you prefer to be dead? Which answer do you think they'd give you? Honestly, after what the soldiers experience on the battlefield, seeing friends being blown up by bombs, I think they would not want to live anymore. So you think that they would prefer to be dead? That's awful convenient that you think that the people who have to die in lieu of you, because you can't be drafted nor be sent to war, would prefer to be dead over having to suffer, but you have an equal claim to their suffering, because after all, you're still alive and have to deal with the aftermath, right? Or you. No, okay, I... They would prefer to be dead, right? They would prefer it. They, they, they wouldn't want to be alive. I don't know. I'm talking for myself. I just can't imagine that I still would want to live. But I also see your point that it's like, yeah, I probably agree that men who are drafted have it harder if they actually have to fight there. So let's try this. Dear Amanda, I've been in the trenches for 15 months fighting a brutal war. I can't wait to get home to you and my three young children. Wait for me, my dear. I love you. Boom, a grenade goes off and blows him to smithereens. You think that he would prefer to stay dead rather than have to deal with the suffering of his, of his friends 
getting killed on the battlefield. Is that really your position after you think about it for even one second? No, I think for some people it is that way. I'm not talking about everyone. But sure, some, but I mean, not even the vast majority, right? It can't even be that way for the vast majority of them. I think if you live through horrible things and war and experience horrible things, some people probably don't want to live anymore with that. I'll just end this real quick so Brian can move it on with a final quote from a famous movie called Full Metal Jacket. One of the most famous lines from that movie was, the dead only know one thing, that it's better to be alive. Hmm. Those were some new arguments, by the way, Andrew. Those were very good. Um, now, I think there's a bit of confusion here also, though, because we, we're trying to compare the degrees of suffering. It's not really the question, though. It's who is the primary victim of war, men or women? Nadly, at least in the Ukraine example, you have not been convinced that men are the primary victims of war? Mm. Well, yeah, I see your point, and I think it makes sense, but I wouldn't say it's much more of a victim, but yeah, probably a little bit more. What about you? I believe that men have it worse. Mm. Mm. Men's lives are harder. Why, why is it so hard for some women to acknowledge, like, women have it worse in this way, this way, this way, this way? But even in the one that appears so obvious, you can't even grant to men one grievance, one way in which they can be considered a victim. I find that really interesting. Men are still the victim, just a lot of people are the victim if there's war. But, I mean, if we're doing a comparison, so feminism, the genesis of feminism is a comparison between men and women. Men have it better in X way. Men have this right. Women get mistreated in this way. But it's interesting, you can't even, in this situation, I think there's no doubts that men are more, like if you look at death rates, for example, throughout all of human history, you look at World War I, you look at World War II, there's tens of millions of male-only military deaths. If I were to ask you this question, do men or women suffer more during childbirth? Women? To, you want everybody or just the people who said war? Just the people who said war. Do, do men or women suffer more during childbirth? What about my trauma from seeing my poor woman going through all that agony and pain, and I can't do anything about it? And then, then I have to live with it. What about my trauma? What oh, about my suffering from having to see that? Oh my God, you also have trauma then. You're also a victim. Yeah, I'm a total, I'm total, in fact, wouldn't you say that I'm an equal victim? If you want to be, yeah. Okay, well then, I guess <laughs> I want to, to so over to the one who's not trolling, doesn't have the stupid Coke bottle glasses. Can you answer my question? Oh my Are men or women the primary victim of pregnancy pain in childbirth. Well, women, but I also think it's... Like Wait, why are women the primary victims of that? Because their body suffers. Oh, and whose body suffers in the war? Didn't you? <laughs> Go ahead. But for the war, the man just stands there in a hospital and, like, has to help the woman a little bit. But for war, the... No, 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 it's the trauma. Don't you understand? It's the trauma. It's the fact that I have to live with the fact that I couldn't do anything while she was going through all that pain and agony. And it's, it's haunted me forever. How am I not at the same scale of victim as she is, even though it's her body that's being ripped asunder? Can you explain that to me? <laughs> I just uh. don't think childbirth is that traumatizing. Okay. No, yeah, I, well, I just don't think that you not getting blown up is as traumatizing as getting blown up either. But, you know, what do I know? It is traumatizing to getting blowing up. Yes, is it more traumatizing for the loved one to get blown up or for you to get blown up? So then, therefore, the primary victims of war would have to be... Men. Yay. Yeah, men. Yeah. I'm proud of you. You got it. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me read some chats. We have a few more questions. We have Lol Pal.